Guys, I think there's something down there. Oh, oh, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, right away. Yeah, I hear the guinea tracks right there. There he is. There's the guinea, right there. Guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm up at the mountain fishing farm, came in here uh, to the goats real quick to check on them. We've got a winter storm coming in uh, tonight. Uh, right now the temperatures are plummeting down to below negative 10 Fahrenheit and with the uh, wind chill that's coming here very soon, it's gonna go below negative 30 Fahrenheit. That's the coldest that I uh, will have ever experienced. It's probably the coldest that these guys here uh, have ever seen. So we're just gonna make sure that they've got plenty of hay to munch on and to bed in here tonight. Uh, we're gonna get the chickens and the birds ready as well for the storm. Whew, man. Then what we're gonna try and do tonight still is go up on the mountain and try and hunt for some food uh, that we can eat tonight. And then tomorrow, we're gonna try and go ice fishing at the lake right up behind the farm because after tonight, that sucker is gonna be frozen solid. So then we can ice fish all winter long. So we'll check that out in the morning. This will be like a two day uh, adventure here. Hey little guys, I'm gonna have to make sure that these uh, roosters are able to stay in there. I wanna make sure that they don't come out at all. They usually cuddle up with the goats anyways uh, at night uh, so that they stay nice and warm. Look how big they are, man. Yo. We're just gonna feed the goats uh, so they can eat as much as they want uh, here tonight because when their bellies are full, that generates a lot of heat uh, in them and they've been growing out their winter fur. So they should be plenty warm as long as they're shielded from the wind inside those shelters there. Now this here is a sign of how cold it is. Uh, the guineas are always out roaming around, uh, but if they're hiding in here, uh, then that means they, they know something's up. Here's the pond. <laughs> so excited. Uh, to get up there and do some ice fishing. One thing we gotta do real quick is go into the shop and uh, check on the tugboat. If it's gonna be cold like that, the boat is not actually winterized. So we just need to make sure that the engine and radiator on the boat uh, doesn't freeze. I've got a little trick that I'm gonna try out here or have been trying out. We're gonna see if it's working. As you can see here, uh, I've got hay stacked up uh, for the goats for the entirety of uh, winter. Just gotta make sure that we get all of those uh, preps taken care of and uh, we're stocked to the gills baby we are stocked on uh, goat food so the engine on the tug is right down here underneath this cover and I put a light down there with the ideas that that generates a little bit of heat and then uh, this cover is insulated and that, that heat in here should uh, keep things warm 35 degrees Fahrenheit guys that is uh very close to freezing, very, very close to freezing. Uh, I've got just a little seven watt LED in there right now, but I might bump that up to, uh, let's just put a 40 watt uh, incandescent bulb in there to just boost that temperature, because when it gets cold tonight, that's probably gonna go below freezing in there. What do we got here? Ooh, a 29 watt. Those LED bulbs, they just don't get that hot, and I guess we just need a little bit more heat. So let's see if that 29 watt uh, will give us, should give us what, four, four times the amount of heat output. Ooh yeah, this bulb here is definitely starting to put out some, some warmth. Okay. Ah. All right, these guys are pretty much set for right now. We're gonna check on them again uh, here tonight as the temperatures drop, just to keep an eye on all the animals and make sure uh, that they're still doing okay. Jeez, look at this, even the pool is a frozen mess. Oh, do I dare step out onto... <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm not gonna risk it. How cool would that be, get a couple of trout and throw them in the pool? Then we could drill a hole and just ice fish right there. <laughs> Hey, you guys. 
Oh, Dika, hey, what's going on, missus? What's going on? Hey, Stinker. You can see little Tika here, she's all cold. She just uh, got a haircut from you. I'm not 100% done yet, but she was getting way too fluffy. So, uh, <laughs> and a lot of you guys have also been asking where Kiara, my other dog, uh, has been at. Uh, Kiara's doing just fine, but she's not actually my uh, dog. It's just uh, Tika and me over here uh, at the farm. But I do have to introduce you guys to someone new. Everyone meet little Ruger. Hi Ruger, how are you doing? Ruger, meet everyone. This little guy here, he's a 16 uh, week old little hunting dog mix, but uh, he's a rescue. He was dropped off uh, at a pound when he was just a little tiny baby. So uh, Ruger's gonna be joining Tika and me out here at the farm and he'll be kind of a, you know, he'll be a guard dog out at the farm, watching after the animals, watching after the farm. We'll see if we can train him maybe for some hunting. He'll be joining us on, fi on fishing adventures and stuff. All right, why don't we just go uh, up on the mountain uh, real quick before it gets dark. We've got probably about an hour left uh, before dark and I was hearing a bunch of quail uh, just right here uh, in the valley. So uh, why don't we see if we can maybe just get ourselves a little bit of dinner. Whew. Not for camouflage, it's really just to stay warm. I can hear the quail right now. I can hear them down there. So, uh, whew, man, cold baby, let's do this though. And boom, we're on the mountain and we're, we're hunting, baby. Uh, we're using a steel shot right here. Ooh, guys, it's cold. It is cold. We're gonna look for their tracks. I'm seeing deer, oh man, lots of deer tracks. There's some coyote tracks right there by that rock in those uh, bushes around it. That's where quail like to hang out generally. They're, uh, they like kind of hiding in big groups. And uh, quail, it's this little, like a little mountain bird that we have, if you've never seen them before. They're actually really cute, but they're really, really tasty too. The daily limit here on quail is like 10 or 15 a day. I don't want to actually get that many. I just want like a couple, couple for dinner if we can get them. Wow, so many deer tracks here. Look at this, it's like a, a deer highway. <laughs> that is crazy. Not seeing any quail tracks though, so there might not be any over here in this spot. Ooh, here, look at that. That's a bunch of active, fresh quail tracks. They're going this way here. We're just gonna follow those, those tracks. See if we can find them here anywhere. <laughs> Looks like they went up it, into these bushes. Oh, look at that, it's a quail super highway. So many quail right here. So many quail, all right guys, get ready, get ready. They could be here anywhere. Oh, wow, there's gotta be hundreds of them. Oh man, this is so quail here. Come on baby, they could be here anywhere between the bushes and the rocks. I just heard some right here, so. Alright. Ooh, I see a bunch of quail tracks. Got one, got one. Whew. Remember our shot shells? Just throw them right back in our pocket. Don't want to leave any of that stuff behind. Whew. Let's go, baby. Here he is, guys. All right. Beautiful. This guy right here, it's a male, a male quail. 
You can tell it's a male because of his bright colors and big size and that giant little thing up on top of his head. That's kind of what quail are known for. That's a good size uh, quail right here too. So I'm super, super stoked that uh, we got one right here for dinner. They are up in the challenging terrain though, guys. These are, these are wild mountain quail. All right, that little guy right there. One quail in the pocket, baby, let's go. Maybe one more. <laughs> I think I got a feather in my mouth. <laughs> All right, wow. Just look at the view here, guys. Oh, tons of quail tracks right here, right here. giant cliffs I mean we could come back here and just go rock climbing or something too how crazy would that be we still need to summit the mountain here behind the farm and see what else is up there all right I think uh, what we're just gonna do is uh call tonight we could continue a little bit but I want to give the quail uh, time to find roosting spots. Basically, we don't want to spook them as it's getting dark. That way they can find a place to sleep for the night. So uh, we got one. <laughs> That's plenty, plenty for us uh, to eat here today. Or we only want to take what we actually need. But uh, man, cleared out. Safe, how awesome was that? Quail, baby, not going hungry tonight. The quail actually come into my yard to sleep uh, at night. They love sleeping in that tree there. I'll often have like 20 to 40 quail. We're actually going to avoid that tree right there because there might already be a bunch of quail uh, coming in there to roost for the night and I, I don't want to disturb them. Dude, look at that. Huh. Perfect. Broke right off. We got some green onion here that we can use to fry up with that quail there. All right, making sure the ducks uh, come in here. Uh, now we've got an issue actually, and that's uh, the guineas are sitting up here. They want to roost. Everything here is all torn up. The wind has completely ripped this right here. Uh, and you can see these brave souls want to stay uh, out there in the weather. The problem is that the updated uh, weather reports based on the temperatures and the wind coming through are now showing that it's going to be wind chills uh, down to like negative 35 Fahrenheit. And I can feel it guys, it's like it's stinging, just stinging on my skin. I really should be wearing uh, that, that covering. We gotta watch out in temperatures like that to not get frostbite. But that's my big concern right now with the guineas actually is that uh, they might think they wanna be up there, but I'm afraid that with uh, their feet on the metal here and the wind chill that we're having that they could get frostbite on their toes. They're gonna hate this, but uh, there's a tote that I've got inside the pen there. And I might just put the guineas in that tote uh, overnight so that they can actually stay warm. And then we'll just let them out in the morning when the storm passes. That was a disaster. Guys, guineas are really hard to, to, to grab. I need to commit better to the next one. There we go, we got the guinea. I'm gonna put him in the tote now. Yeah, they're not super stoked about being in here, but that'll be way safer, way safer for the guineas uh, to just be in here uh, for the night. Oh, sorry guys. I know you wanna be up there on your roost, but that's not gonna be safe for you guys. It's way too cold. Oh, man, man. Fingers hurt so bad. Let's find our one lost guinea. Where did he go? Come here, guinea. Come here, little guy. I know, we gotta get you to bed. Ah, <sighs> what did I tell you about catching a guinea? It's not easy. Not easy. Oh, man. 
Oh, guys, we gotta get inside. We gotta get those guineas in there and get back in the house. That one guinea is still missing that got away from us out there. <sighs> we gotta find the guinea. It's over here on this side of the fence somewhere. Here are the guinea tracks right there. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. There's the guinea right there. Got him. Got him. It's all right, little guy. It's all right. We'll get you to a warm, warm spot. Whew, okay. Oh, the guineas are all uh, huddled together. The ducks are huddling. The chickens are uh, safer. It's a lot warmer inside these sheds here and they're protected from the wind. Uh, it's the, the wind itself. That's the deadly thing. We're just going to give the goats uh, the rest of this hay here. And we're going to throw this in here for them as a bedding for the night that way they can they can just cuddle up in that stay nice and warm not worried about the goats look how thick their fur is especially Heidi and Brownie here look at them here we go girls <laughs> bobber and bullet are just snacking huh oh boys good boy oh you guys my face is going numb that's probably not a good thing <laughs> probably gonna come out uh, again a little bit later just to check on all those guys make sure that uh, they're doing okay and uh, I've got thermometers down in there just kind of monitoring the temperatures one of the colder things I've ever experienced hey Tika Oh man, you guys aren't missing anything out there. There we go. We're just gonna cook up a little bit of rice uh, while we head out there and just uh, clean up that quail real quick that we'll have for dinner. A little bit of feathers, but you can see right there, this is uh, the, the quail uh, brass. We're gonna take off the legs too, just so we don't waste waste any of this. There we go, that's a little quail uh, leg right there. So we got uh, two of the legs. We got the breast, so it's actually quite a bit of meat on uh, one quail. I mean, that'll be enough to feed us here tonight. All right, and for the quail breast, we're just gonna kind of fillet these little guys out. And what we're gonna do with the meat here is just shine uh, some light through it to make sure that there's not any shot left over. See right there, you can tell uh, there's one of the BBs. We don't wanna bite down on that. Now these guys here are steel, so it's not toxic, but uh, you could still chip a piece of your tooth out. All right, and guys, we're just gonna keep this super, super simple here. This is our quail uh, meat right there. And uh, all we're gonna season it with is just a little bit of Danish sea salt right here. I'm not gonna be shy. We're sweating actually quite a bit up on the mountain, even with it pretty cold. Uh, so we gotta make sure to get our minerals and uh, dump these guys right in there. Smells so good, I'm so hungry. <laughs> we got our kind of frozen green onion here. Yeah, nice and crispy brown. <laughs> Little Tika just went outside, man, it's cold out there, stinker. I threw on some cozy uh, pants here for the night. Greens. There we go. Take a look at that. That is a, a mountain farm survival meal. Fresh quail harvested from the mountain up there. Uh, some green onions that we grew right there in the yard that were still good for the picking. And then uh, rice that I've had stored here for a while. Basically, we could store as much rice as we wanted to out here and it'll last if you properly store your rice for 15 to 25 years plus. So let's just go ahead and, and dig in here right away with a nice piece of quail right there. 
You can see it flakes apart, honestly, just like uh, like chicken, very much so. Mm, mm. Nice and tender. The flavor on that quail is fantastic. It's just just like chicken, but more flavorful. Uh, and the only we didn't even put pepper on there. It's just butter and the Danish sea salt, and it just lifts all of that flavor out of that meat right there. Tika, do you want to try some quail? Oh. <laughs> I think Tika approves of the quail. <laughs> Ruger just hangs out on the couch here all day, like a little couch potato. Do you want to try some quail? Oh, I think Ruger likes the quail. Oh, mister. God, Ruger is such a shy, shy little boy. But uh, he sure likes going outside down to the lower pasture and running around and playing there. It's just here today with the cold weather. I'm just so afraid uh, that they'll freeze their paws or something like that. All right, quail, some rice, and the green onions. That, that's a wholesome meal right there. Let's dig into one of those little quail legs. Not big, it's like a tiny little chicken wing. Mm. I don't think we've ever done like a successful hunt and cook on this channel before. Probably not gonna do it very often, but let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about a little, sprinkle a little hunting in every once in a while, like some Danish sea salt. <laughs> mm. All right, me and the dogs, we're just gonna uh, stay warm here for the rest of the night. I'm gonna go out one more time to check on the animals. Uh, here in a little bit and uh, man, I'll just see you guys in the morning here and fingers crossed that uh, the lake is solidly frozen over so we can do some ice fishing out there and we'll continue this survival, the farm survival. <laughs> Catch and cook. Oh, I'm there. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning, guys. It's actually already later in the day. I'm preheating the truck. We've got the ice fishing uh, gear loaded up. Last night was absolutely freezing cold. It's the coldest that I had ever experienced. Uh, I just had to take care of all of the animals. I had to give them fresh waters because everything froze up on them last night. It actually got down to negative 17.5 Fahrenheit with wind, so probably wind chills down into like negative 30 to 40 Fahrenheit. That was cold. Let me show you just how cold uh, it was. This morning I came out uh, to find that the eggs that the chickens laid, they froze. Check this out. <laughs> solid, solid frozen eggs. So uh, we'll take these guys along. The animals are all set for right now, but we're not gonna be able to leave the farm for very long, just a couple of hours. Uh, it'll get dark soon anyways, but that'll give us just enough time to hopefully catch some fish up on the ice. I actually just realized we're like out of gas, almost. <laughs> I should be able to make it back here just fine, but just to play it safe, we're gonna throw five gallons of gasoline in the back, especially in the cold temperatures. You always wanna make sure that you got plenty of gas in your car as an emergency uh, heat source in case you get stuck somewhere. You wanna be able to keep that engine running to stay warm. Whew. All right. Off we go. Look at this. The lake is completely frozen over. It's been freezing for like at least a week uh, up here now, so the ice could be pretty thick. Oh man, I had a water bottle in the car, but uh, yeah, we're not gonna be drinking from this one here anytime soon. That's all right, luckily we got a whole lake full of water down there just waiting for us. Man, <laughs> first time out with the ice sled. This, this, this makes me so happy seeing this little sled back in action. It's been too long. 
Oh man, the lake is untouched. It is a clean slate of uh, wintry goodness. We're probably gonna start uh, right here in this area because that behind me is actually a creek that flows into the lake. And I'm not sure if it flows like under the ice right now, but that could often be a place where fish love hanging out. Okay, before we get uh, too far out, let's just do a quick uh, test drill just to make sure that the ice is uh, safe. It should be plenty, plenty thick, but uh, let's just go ahead and see uh, what we're working with here. Man, so much snow on top of the ice. Oh, that ice looks amazing, guys. This is good looking, solid, solid ice. Let's see how thick it is. Clean up that hole real good. Get our little scooper and uh, clean that out. All right, let's see how thick that ice is. It's probably about seven inches. Seven inch thick ice. Plenty safe for what we're doing here today. And you know, since we have a hole drilled here, it would be a crime not to at least like fish it once, right? Just for added safety, uh, even though the ice is plenty thick, we got our picks here. And we're just gonna wear those guys around our neck. That way if we go in, we can climb uh, back out of the ice. Okay, we've got uh, one of these rods set up with uh, just a tiny, tiny little ice jig uh, right here. So what we're just gonna do is send that baby down there just to see how deep it actually is right here. Wow, it's way deeper here than I thought it was going to be. Way deeper. Yeah, that's the bottom there. Oh, wow, guys, we're like probably 20 feet deep right here. That might even be too deep. Let's just go ahead and jig it for a second, but what we'll probably do is just throw a, a worm on there. I've got a tin of worms with me. We're just gonna cook up uh, those eggs that I brought out for that. Uh, I got our little solid fuel stove and uh, then we've got our fuel tablets right here. And we'll set that right on there. This here is actually uh, one of the fish traps. We might even use one of these fish traps today. There we go. All right, grab our two uh, frozen eggs. I've never cooked a frozen egg before. I have no idea like how long they need to cook or if this is even gonna work. But uh, let's just go ahead and give that a shot. It is really cold without the gloves. This little guy right here, he wanted to be in this video so he's gonna join us and with the worm. We're just gonna pinch off a little tiny piece. Don't need a whole lot. We're just giving this jig a little bit of a tail. Okay, let's go ahead and Lower that baby down. I'm just gonna maybe jig it right here. Just sight fish a little bit right there underneath the, the ice surface. Sometimes there could be a hungry trout just hanging out right there. Guys, I think there's something down there. Man, I mean, I, I saw something move down there, guys. Let's just go ahead and send this baby down all the way to the bottom. We're down there. We're probably only about three feet up, but that should be a perfect spot for anything down there hanging out at the bottom to look up. Oh, oh there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite right away, right away. Just 
little jigs, tiny little jigs, and then hold it still. Come on, baby. Whatever that was, just hit it once. Okay, well, there's definitely fish down there. Now we just got to figure out how to get them. There's a bunch of crows up there circling me. Maybe they already know I'm going to starve down here. And they're just getting ready to come in and finish me off. All right, come on. There's a bite. Oh. oh, did you see that? Little tiny bites. Might be a little guy biting or a big one just playing with it. Come on, baby. All right, no action over uh, at that hole there. So we're just gonna go ahead and drill another hole here in the shallower area, closer uh, to that creek. Ah, there we go. And maybe we'll have a little bit more luck right here because besides that one bite, nothing's really been happening over there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up uh, the fish trap uh, right here while we try and jig the shallower hole. There we go. Man, the crows are just having a party up there. We better get to catching something. <laughs> Otherwise we'll get eaten by the crows. For the trap, all we've got here is a uh, rod with just a little treble hook. We're gonna take uh, that worm and just throw them right there on the hook. So we've got this guy right here uh, going into the hole. Now the way to set the trap is right here on the last eye of the hook, I've got some little zip ties. And then down here, we've got this mouse trap that's modified to be the trigger mechanism. If you guys wanna see how this trap works, uh, check out my ice fishing videos from last season. And uh, I built these traps in one of the videos and we were killing it out here killing it with these traps. So we set the line into a little loop that I've got there and we got to get our fingers away because when a fish bites, it's going to pull on that line and that'll make the trap snap open, which then releases the rod. And then the rod is going to automatically set the hook on the fish. Let's go ahead and take a look at these eggs here. <laughs> look at that. Hmm. It's so weird, like the egg isn't really attached to the shell at all. Let's see if we can get the whole egg out in like one piece. Look at that, that's the easiest egg peeling that you've ever seen in your life. Mmm. Oh man, when you're hungry like that and cold, just a nice egg is just so rich in flavor and mmm. Full of protein. All right. Let's see what's going on over here in the shallow end of the lake. And uh, we're just gonna listen for that uh, trap over there. The nice thing is because it's a mouse trap, it snaps really loud. Okay, at the bottom. Definitely a lot shallower right here. I'm just gonna stick that rod there for a second. Gotta tear into this second egg, I'm so hungry. There we go. You know, it's funny, the texture of the egg white is definitely a little weirder uh, after it's been frozen, but the flavor is still exactly the same. It's, oh, mm, okay. oh, you asked them. 
We lost him. We lost him. That was a good bite. Send it right back down. That fish knew that we were stuffing our mouth right there in that moment. Oh, there's a bite. There he is. Fish on, baby. Fish on. Oh, oh, fi <laughs> fighter, fighter for his size. We got us a little, a little yellow perch. <laughs> Do we want to eat this guy? He's a little small, but uh, man, if we don't catch anything else, uh, we might as well keep him. Plus, yellow perch are invasive uh, here. So tell you what, let's just go ahead and keep this little guy. Oh, he ate the worm. All right, I brought over the egg water here. Mm, 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 look at that. I'm mean, so thirsty, I didn't bring a filter or anything, but this is boiled lake water, so it's safe to drink. A little weird. We're gonna have to drink that fast before it freezes. Come on, baby, there's gotta be another perch home. Where there's one, there's always more. They come in big schools of perch, but I'd like to catch a bigger one. Perch can get like really, really big. They can get over a foot long. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, oh, lost him. Lost him. Oh, guys, the trap just went off. Trap just went off. What just happened here? Anything on there? Oh, no. The worm is gone. Uh, I wasn't actually filming in that moment, but, uh, oh man, and that was higher up in the water, so really that could have only been a trout. Oh, what a bummer, but that's super exciting. Nothing's happened uh, in the last probably hour, guys. It has been dead here. I mean, that's why I'm just like wandering around in the woods, seeing if there's anything uh, else cool that I could find. All right, so what we're looking for is just a little bit of uh, some dry branches. There we go. Just want to make sure that it's uh, dead wood because that's the stuff that's going to be dry. We don't want to harvest anything here that's uh, still alive. A couple bigger pieces of wood here. Oh, perfect. Look at this, some old uh, leaves here. Just pull those right off of the branch. We're on the frozen creek. I figured maybe we can just make a little, little fire to warm up and cook that perch on. It is getting cold really, really fast. All right, we've got our leaves here that we're just gonna light up with that moss or whatever that is. It's not that dry, not as dry as I was hoping it would be. Come on, baby. Ooh, very smoky, very smoky, okay. All right, that fire is going really good and we're working on getting some nice embers in there to cook up this trophy size perch right here, but we just gotta clean him uh, up real quick. He's kinda frozen solid already, almost frozen solid. So let's just go ahead and cut open the belly here on this little guy. Ooh, look at that, a bunch of eggs. Nice, we can eat those too. Got the gills and all the guts out. We'll just throw that right in the woods for the, the bears. Actually, no, they're hibernating for the raccoons to eat. All right, and that's about as much as we're gonna do with that little perch. All right, just gonna take our fish, 
Just kind of throw it right up on there. That can just start cooking right up there on the fire while uh, we grill up these eggs right here. Let's give those eggs a nice little roast. Oh man, guys, it is freezing cold, man. This fire is uh, what's keeping me going here right now. I do have the fish trap still set up. So we're just listening for the fish trap. We're just gonna kind of rotate our perch here, the skin on a perch is very, very thick. So just kind of roasting them on the fire like that is perfect. We'll just char the skin, uh, but the meat underneath should uh, should be perfectly cooked by the time we're done with it. See how the skin is just turning nice and brown on that fish? It's perfect. Just cooking the meat right underneath there. Look at that fish. It is uh, crisped on the outside, but it's perfect. We can just pull the uh, fins right out. Look at that. They're super, super bony uh, on a perch. Not very pleasant to eat like a trout. We're just peeling the skin back. And look at that, we've got perfectly cooked white uh, fish meat down there underneath the skin. Mm. Mm. You know what, the skin actually, a bit of a char, it's actually really good. A lot of flavor in that skin. So definitely this uh, challenge here, I don't know. Don't think we would have survived out here very long off of just this one little guy. Mm. Those fish eggs should be done too. Can't wait to try those. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. The bones just came right off right there. There we go. That's just one big old piece of protein. Here's the... Uh, eggs right there. They're uh, yeah, nice and crispy looking on the outside. You can see little itty bitty tiny like white yellow fish eggs. Crunchy. It's actually extremely, extremely pleasant. Tastier than the fish itself, I would say. This is like a treat whenever you can get some perch eggs. Mm. Man, I could eat those all day long. It's amazing when you're hungry and haven't eaten anything in a while, how everything just starts tasting really, really good. So something that I've been uh, thinking about doing is coming out here uh, with an ice tent and doing like a 24 hour survival challenge on the ice. So let me know in the comments if you guys are down for more ice fishing challenges here this winter. Otherwise I'll be out uh, at the desert compound in either the next or the episode after that. I have to get back out there to check on the desert compound as well as fish for the monster rainbow trout in those desert creeks. So of course, feel free to subscribe if you guys are still brand new. That way you don't miss those episodes. You don't have to, of course, you can just enjoy uh, this episode here as is. Leave a like on the video, it helps a ton. Drop a comment, I'll see you guys in the comments comment section and then we'll see you all very soon for the next fishing adventure and until then you all know it fish on baby you know i've always been curious when you're doing a fire on the ice does it burn a hole down into the water nope look at that it went like half an inch half an inch maybe into the ice so i guess fire on the ice no risk of just randomly <laughs> falling through oh man i still got to get the ice traps the fish traps out there get out of here it's a beautiful night though look at that the moon is out up there it's foggy too and freezing cold